Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about theorem of perpendicular axis. There are two useful theorems relating to moment of inertia. The concept of moment of inertia is already actually discussed in our previous video. I will provide the link in the description box. If you want, you can watch that. So actually there are two useful theorems relating to this moment of inertia. One theorem uh, is of uh, perpendicular axis and another one is theorem of parallel axis. In this video, we will discuss about the theorem of perpendicular axis and I will provide the link for the theorem of parallel axis in the description box. So uh, theorem of perpendicular axis is actually useful or applicable to bodies which are planar. That is, this theorem is applicable to flat bodies whose thickness is very small compared to their length, breadth, radius, etc. For example, if we consider a disc uh, and let its thickness be uh, 1 micrometer and let its uh, radius be 3 centimeters. Okay, see, its thickness is 1 micrometer and radius is 3 centimeter. So, its thickness is very small compared to its radius now. Okay. So, theorem of perpendicular axis can be applied here to find out the moment of inertia of this disk about a particular axis. Okay. Now, consider this figure. Here we have a planar body, this green colored one. You just imagine this as a planar body. Then this is the, actually this is the plane of the body. Here X and Y are two perpendicular axes lie in the plane of the body. Okay, and here we have Z axis which is perpendicular to the plane. That is perpendicular to the X and Y axis. For example, uh, if X and Y axis are lying in this plane, in the plane of this paper, then Z axis is like this. Z axis is like this means it is perpendicular to the Okay, if you are, okay, you just imagine this planar body here. X and Y are two perpendicular axes lying in the plane of the body. And Z axis is actually perpendicular to the plane. That is, it is perpen that is, it will be like this. Okay, perpendicular to both X and Y axis. So, here we have Z axis which is perpendicular to the plane of the planar body. And it is passing through a point O. Two mutually perpendicular axes X and Y are lying in the plane of this body and these two axes X and Y are concurrent with the Z axis. That is all the three axes are perpendicular to each other and pass through this point O. Now according to the theorem of perpendicular axis the moment of inertia of a planar body or lamina about an axis perpendicular to the plane is equal to the sum of its moment of inertia about two perpendicular axes concurrent with perpendicular axis and lying in the plane of the body. Don't worry about this statement. See here the axis perpendicular to the plane is is an axis. So, moment of inertia of this planar body about Z axis. So, let that be IZ. I is usually uh, used to represent the moment of inertia. So, here the moment of inertia of this planar body about this Z axis. No? So, I am just representing it by I subscript Z. Okay. This will be according to this theorem. This will be equal to the sum of the moment of inertia about the other two perpendicular axes concurrent with the Z axis and lying in the plane of this body. So here X and Y are the two perpendicular, the two perpendicular axes which are concurrent with the Z axis and lying in the plane of this planar body. So the moment of inertia of this body about this Z axis will be equal to the sum of moment of inertia of this body about these two axes. That is the mom, it will be the sum of moment of inertia about the X axis and moment of inertia about the y axis. That is moment of inertia of this planar body about the z axis is equal to moment of inertia of this body about this x axis plus moment of inertia of this body about the y axis. 
Okay, so this is all about the theorem of perpendicular axis. We will do one example based on this theorem uh, in the next video which will give you a better idea about this theorem. So I will provide the link for that video, that example in the description box. So if you watch that, you will get a better understanding about this theorem of perpendicular axis. So I hope you understood this. Thank you.